QPR have brought in a new manager, but it's not Neil Warnock. In fact, I'm not even quite sure who this guy is. It's the Uruguayan curl to one in. Oh, Middlesbrough, take the lead! What is up guys, Matthew here, welcome back to another video here today and we are going to discuss the news and albeit it's not breaking news, I'm a little bit late on this one so I do apologise. QPR have brought in their replacement for Gareth Ainsworth, now fair play, they've done this pretty quick, they clearly were waiting for this guy to potentially become available or they were waiting for the dominoes to fall into place and were ready to quickly react and bring in their new man quickly which I think is very good preparation from QPR when you see that Millwall still haven't appointed a new manager at their place. But they've announced the appointment, and forgive me if I butcher his name, Marty Sifuentes? I don't know if it's a C for C or a C for K, as in Kifuentes or Sifuentes. I'm just going to call him Marty to avoid embarrassment. But it does mention that the 41-year-old Spaniard arrives from the Swedish top flight side Hammerby, where he's been for the past two years. And the CEO says that they are delighted to bring Marty in and would firstly like to thank Hammerby for being fantastic to deal with throughout the process. They say he's an exciting appointment. They look forward to seeing his impact and having a succession plan in place is a necessary part of football, which harkens back to what I was saying about this seeming like it was predetermined with how quickly they've got it done. It does mention that he's coached in Netherlands, Spain, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, um, but of course, as recently was at Hammerby. Looking at Hammerby, currently in the Swedish top tier, they are currently sixth in the Swedish league on 42 points from 28 games. He did guide them to Europe last season. Not sure if it was the first time Hammerby have ever been into a European competition, but they did get into the qualifying, sorry, the second qualifying round of the Europa Conference League, but were beaten 2-1 on aggregate by FC20, of course, an Eredivisie side. So, it seems like this guy comes with some excitement, he comes with some pedigree, he's worked across multiple different parts of Europe, and I see this as quite an exciting, unknown appointment for QPR. I think the fans will be quite open to, to his potential style of football and what he is likely to bring to the club, but I think this could be the right appointment but at the wrong time. For me, and I mentioned this in the video I did about Ainsworth when he was sacked, it was unbelievably heavily rumoured that Neil Warnock was going to come in, and it just seemed inevitable that he would come in, given the success he'd had with QPR previously, and he's basically got a spotless record when it comes to fixing teams in positions like this. And I mentioned that with the squad they have, I honestly had absolutely no qualms or worries about Neil Warnock coming in and keeping QPR up. It just worked. Um, the only reason you perhaps wouldn't have been for that is that it wasn't a long-term solution. Of course, QPR would have had to have probably got rid of Warnock at the end of this season if he kept them up and start again next season. But I also thought that QPR maybe can't afford to go straight into another long-term project at this stage. I feel like they need a short-term fix to just get them out of trouble. And that's what brings me a little bit of trepidation about this appointment. The fact that Sifuentes has never managed in England, and I think the championship, it might look like it's the second tier of English football from the outside, but it is a ridiculously tough, competitive, ruthless league that's only getting better and better and I think regardless of who you are or where you come from you will get a shock to the system when you come to the championship and I think to ask this guy in his first job in the championship in English football to turn QPR around and get them out the drop zone is a big big ask. Now I'm not going to write the guy off because again He's an unknown quantity, essentially, so you can't really judge him one way or the other. The only thing you can say is that his lack of experience at this level 
maybe, as it has done with managers in the past in the Championship, could catch up with them quite quickly. And I just feel like QPR are maybe doubling down on whatever long-term project they want in place. They're doubling down on refusing to sort of take a step backwards. They don't want a short term. They don't want a Neil Warnock. They don't want to accept, I guess, defeat and that they've got themselves in this mess and they want to keep persisting with a certain style. They want to keep persisting with a certain type of manager. I don't know. I just feel like QPR have sort of had the chance there to, to fix and have a quick fix and they've not sort of stubbornly went no we're desperate to continue and we want to go in this direction with this new manager and listen it could work a treat he might come in he might be amazing the style of football might really suit the players but if it doesn't and he doesn't take to the league and it takes too long QPR could either be set adrift too far for him to then suddenly have to save this club from relegation in the championship or it could just go wrong from the start and things just never get going and QPR find themselves in exactly the same position but just a lot close to the end of the season where they've got less time to fix things. I know it's only November, plenty of time to still get QPR out of trouble and I think because of that this appointment works to an extent but I just feel like if you're QPR you've got Neil Warnock sat right there, he's got history with the club he's notable for getting clubs out of trouble you just get you just get the job done get yourself to the summer and then you look at an appointment like this when he's got a full pre-season and he's got time to also maybe bring in his own signings mold his own squad in his own image whereas at the minute i feel like it is just going to be a case of desperately trying to just find a fix and find a way that works maybe until january that's if there even is funds available so this is a yeah, to sum up, this is a risk. This is a risk for me. And I'd be interested to see what QPR fans think. Are they in a position where they are happy to still take on an appointment of an unknown quantity? Or are they in the, in the mindset of, we just need a safe pair of hands. Just get us to the end of the season. Keep us up. We rebuild in the summer. I'd be intrigued to see what kind of perspective QPR fans are coming from with terms of this appointment so let me know your thoughts if you're a QPR fan or a championship fan in the comment section below I'm certainly intrigued to see if this goes well if it doesn't have QPR made a bit of an error with this or you know have they found a potential gem who knows I just yeah for me a bit of a risk given QPR's current position and their form of the last year but we'll see so hit the like button on this video do leave me a comment below with your thoughts subscribe for much more championship content football content gaming content and much more and until next time guys take care and i'll see you in the next one